High school, high school. Sadly, for too many kids across the United States, high school still looks like this. A lot of textbooks, way too many textbooks. A lot of desks sitting in rows, a lot of teachers up in front, giving the material out to their kids through a textbook. And heaven help you if you don't finish by the end of May. Sadly, this has been too much of what our kids have been used to since they were in kindergarten. Sadly, it still happens today across the country. And our kids are really, really good at the game of school. You know what I mean by the game of school? They stand up when the bell rings, bell rings again, they sit down, they get how the system works, how it was for us when we were in school, how it was for their parents when they were at school, they understand the game. They're really good at getting the material from a book, hopefully from a teacher, and they're really good about taking a test in a week, and probably in 10 or 20 days, they're really good about forgetting it too. And they do that again and again, almost like lather, rinse, repeat. Senator, you, or, I'm sorry, U.S. Department of Education Secretary, former Secretary Arne Duncan, talks about how in the United States, we spend about $8 billion on textbooks in the nation a year. $8 billion on textbooks for our kids. $8 billion that can be used in so, so many better ways than what we do right now. In my opinion, we need to get rid of that. We need to get rid of the textbooks and almost clear the decks, or really clear the desks, right? What, one of the other things that we need to talk about in education, we talk so much about buzzwords and catchphrases and things like that, and we need to take some of the things off of our teacher's plate. One of the buzzwords and phrases that drives me crazy is 21st century learning. 21st century learning sounds really good, it's a great marketing ploy, but let's think about that for a minute. The 20th century started, or 21st century started when? 15 years ago. 15 years ago on January 1st, 2001, 21st century started. And we still talk about our kids being 21st century learners. I don't want that for my kids. You don't want that for your kids. So right here today, April 17th, 2016, we're going to have a funeral. And we're going to bury, <laughs> we're going to bury the term 21st century learning. All right? So let's take a quick, brief pause, moment of silence, very quick. Say goodbye to 21st century learning because our kids are more important than that because really I want them to be 22nd century learners because if they're born today, they're probably going to get that far, right? So let's take a moment of silence. All right, can I get an amen? Amen. Thank you. So now as we move on and we're going through and we're kind of cleaning the desks as it were and we're talking about what our kids really need, a lot of us want two devices. And I think it was a positive step in the right direction, right? We know that digital technology is really good for students if it's used the right way. The key is not the device, and you in this room know that. The key is our teachers in the classroom. And we didn't rule that out as ed leaders, as superintendents, as principals. We didn't rule that out the best way we could have. In fact, it's something I call device delusion. We sort of thought that by buying a device, because the school district next to me bought the devices for their kids, and I have to keep up with them for my parents and for my kids, so I bought devices too, and I handed them out to teachers and said, here you go, and here you go, kids, and this will make things better, and you'll be a better student, you'll be a smarter student, and you will be more engaged, and that's what we did. And we said, here's a device. But we talk about textbooks still, and all the time and resources that went into textbooks, but we never built that same type of professional development into a device. We gave it to kids, we gave it to teachers, and we said, aren't you going to say thank you, right? Because now you all have a device. So we have to talk about what our device is really used for and how should they be used in our classrooms for our teachers. Because it's a tool. It's not the tool. It's just one of several tools that we need to use. We need to focus our attentions on what that tool, what that technology can do for our kids. So all kids are different. Some kids learn best from a textbook. Some kids learn best from a, a tablet or a device. But really, best learners are going to learn from their teachers. And then we still have to have that connection. We have some kids that want to use their hands when they're learning. We have some kids that want to 
do more with the visual and music arts. And so we can use technology to incorporate all those types of things for our kids. These textbooks were designed for one-minded student. Our students aren't of one mind. They have different interests, they have different thoughts, and we need to foster that and create that relationship. The key to our success for these kids, the key to our success is something that's been in our room for 130 years. That's the classroom teacher. We've been out of focus a little bit uh, during the last probably 30 years about what good education looks like. We talked about devices, we talk about textbooks, but it's still that relationship that all of our kids have with their teachers, all of our kids. And so we need to have the courage as education leaders to reinvest in our teaching staff. We need to give our teachers the tools, the time, and the resources. My best teachers, your best teachers, have been doing things like open educational resources for a long time. Devices enable us to use more open educational resources for our kids than ever before. Back in the dark ages, 30 years ago when we were in school, right, our best teachers had the textbooks, but they were able to pull resources together from all different mediums in for our kids. A device like a laptop or like a tablet still lets you do that. And so we need to figure out a way that we can educate our kids through the use of those electronic mediums. Open educational resources, the Go Open movement, hashtag OER, all of that is something that we should be doing for our kids. We give our teachers the time to cultivate the resources, to curate the resources, and find the best materials for our kids. Not from a textbook that's outdated as soon as it's shipped to your school, not from some, another textbook that might be five or 10 or longer years. It's not about textbook adoption, it's about putting the resources and times in PD into our teachers. We were fortunate enough just about a year ago um, to be part of the Digital Promises League of Innovative Schools and it just by happenstance, I was sitting with two other league superintendents at the same table, and we were doing an exercise, in, in, in a concept exercise, about what can we do with open educational resources for our teachers in our three states. So we started something called the CAL Project. Not this CAL. CAL stands for California, Ohio, and Wisconsin, because I sat with Pat from Kettle Moraine and Devin from right here in Vista, and we talked about couldn't we do one class and share it between all three districts and all three states, and what would that look like for our kids? So we sat down and sketched that out as part of the Spring League meeting just last year. And what we came up with was the Cal Project, and we said to our teachers that were interested in moving forward, we said to them, we're gonna give you very little parameters because we want you to have the voice and we want you to build this out because you know what's best for your kids. So a couple really good teachers from Mentor, a couple of really good teachers from Kettle Moraine, and a couple really good teachers from Vista met in Mentor uh, this past August to set this class up. It was a middle school class, and it involved uh, science, it involved language arts, and social studies. It was about the land and the people and how the people affect the land. So you can imagine when these students are talking through Google tools and Google Hangouts and things like that to their partners in two other states that maybe a Jordan from Vista can talk about what earthquakes are like in California and how that affects the people there. And Pat has a student, probably Mason, who can talk about the frigid temperatures in Wisconsin and how that affects the land and people, right? And, and Jessica in, in Mentor, Ohio, could talk about how we're on the banks of one of the Great Lakes and how that affects the economy and people like that. So we were able to give these students a voice. In fact, this project was so successful, I had one of my teachers, Mr. St. Hilaire, talk about how he had a student in his class who, during the regular school day, doesn't really engage much with his peers. But you put him in front of a camera, talking to a kid in Vista or a student in Kettle Moraine, Wisconsin, and he just magically lit up. So that student's more engaged, and this is more of what we should be doing. It's more like what the businesses do, and education is so slow to adopt to some of these things, but that's really what our kids wanna do, and we need to embrace that and make that happen. One of the first things that we did was we made sure that our teachers had an opportunity to what we'll call huddle up. 
right? We don't give our teachers enough time to talk with one another about what they're doing in the classrooms or what they want to do in the classrooms. So in Mentor, we were able to build in time into their schedule, and we really, really believe investing in professional development for our staff. So they're able to, to meet, to discuss things, and we have very administrative oversight when it comes to something like this. The other thing that I'll talk about too, just briefly, is sort of the evolution of the teacher, right? We started with teaching and it's kind of come full circle. We had the textbook movement, we have devices, but we're coming back and swinging back to our teachers. They're the content experts, not somebody writing a textbook um, in a different state, but really somebody that's engaged with our kids all the time. I want the best opportunity for my kids, I want the best opportunity for your kids, and that doesn't come from printed material, that comes from the relationship that they have with the teacher. So I just want to end on this note. Please, please, as a call to action, and some of the things that I mentioned here in, in my discussion, I want you to go back to your school di districts, engage your students, engage their teachers, and what they want to do for their students in the classroom, because at the end of the day, we all want what's best for our kids. Thank you very much.